story of boats in the Mediterranean goes back to Galley, which was the ancient vessels used by the ancient Phoenicians, and the Galley were like huge troop carriers, and they were used in the Greek wars to basically offload troops onto the land. And not to be stopped by that, the Phoenicians also invented the trireme, and triremes were a much, much smaller ship, and they had three rows of oars on each side, and they were basically used by Sidon and Tyre to attack neighbours and to drift around the Mediterranean in a kind of a peacekeeper's capacity. The trireme was used in the Mediterranean for many, many millennia and the Romans didn't even have triremes, so what they did was they actually captured one and at the beginning of the first war they broke one down and they discovered that the Phoenicians had actually labelled each part of the trireme and just like a flat pack kit or like a Lego drawing they managed to put an entire ship together, an entire trireme, using the plans built into the ship itself and the trireme had a bronze core to it, it was like a battering ram, and they built the entire ship around the battering ram, which would then go around battering other ships. And the trireme was great for boarding other ships, but it was too small really to create a massive armada. But the huge armada was definitely created by the Romans in response to the Carthaginians and they used the triremes against the Carthaginians to defeat them in the First Punic War. Another boat was called the Queen Cream and the Queen Cream was developed a little bit later on by the tyrant of Syracuse that was Dionysius I and around 400 BC he created a queen cream in response to the Carthaginians and it was a much bigger boat and a much faster boat than what we'd normally call a battleship and unfortunately one of those was captured by the Carthaginians they broke it down and they started to mass produce queen creams but the first prototypes from the Carthaginians were captured by the Romans they broke them down and they mass produced queen creams from green wood that they found floating around and the green wood didn't last very long and it soon rotted but the long and short of it was that the queen cream army developed by the Carthaginians set off around Sicily and then was attacked by the Romans and they were defeated by a similar queen cream army on the water which was the Roman fleet, so they were actually attacked and defeated by their own secret weapon. In 216 BC, a couple of years later, you can see Hannibal has managed to get through the Alps and has got all the way down, he actually got as far as Rome and then turned around and headed towards Cannae. And a huge battle at Cannae happened in 216 BC. Cannae was simply wide open space where Hannibal could lure 70,000 Romans into an envelope and crush them and having endured the massacre at Cannae the Romans did not attack Hannibal any further and the guy in charge of Rome at that time was known as Fabian and so the method employed to get rid of Hannibal was the Fabius method which was simply to leave him alone and to pick off his army from the outside and not take him on directly and even though the Emperor came and went Fabius was still employed to avoid Hannibal. In response Scipio takes Carthago Nova in 209 BC and that means that the Romans have now got complete influence of Spain. There were a few Carthaginian pockets left but basically now with Spain that takes care of all of our mining and now that Sardinia and Corsica are out of the picture as well and so most of our trade routes are now being cut off and even Ibiza and the islands are now being taken over by Rome. Hannibal's army is now cut off and one of his brothers, Hastrobal Barker, came across the Alps trying to get to Hannibal and he was captured in 
an army around our here and massacred, and so Hannibal is now left on his own, he doesn't have the siege equipment to take Rome, and he's gone further south to take on extra food for his winter-starved army. The Second Punic War ends with the Battle of Zama, and you can see Hannibal has been pushed down into the heel of Italy, and what the Romans did was simply attack Carthage directly, and that meant that Hannibal's army was recalled from Italy, and they took several months to get there in boats, and they finally arrived in Carthage, where the Carthage coffers were broke, and they said, well, we can't afford to pay you, get lost, and so the Carthaginian army held Carthage to ransom for a bit, and then everybody's eyes turned to the Romans when the Romans turned up, and I think they landed at Utica first of all and headed inland and they had a big showdown with Hannibal at Zama which is just outside Carthage. You can see Zama is on the edge of Numidian territory and if it wasn't for the Numidian army that the Romans picked up then Carthage would have survived the Battle of Zama. And it almost went Hannibal's way but at the final moment Old Carthaginian tactics worked against the Carthaginians and now that Hannibal's army has perished, that's officially the end of the Second Punic War. And now Cato the Elder. Cato the Elder visited Carthage in 157 BC when Carthaginians asked them for help to defeat the Numidians. And the Romans said okay and they sent a party down and one of the senators was Cato the Elder. You can see Numidia is the next place next to Africa, which the Carthaginian Empire was known at that time, and it's strange that Africa would describe the entire continent. Numidia is the next one, and then Mauritania. The Numidians were a fearsome bunch, and that's the first port of call that the Romans went to when they attacked. Cato came back from Carthage in 157 BC, his tunic was full of olives the size of dates, and they realised that the olive oil trade in Carthage was booming, and from that date on he ended all of his speeches with Carthage must be destroyed. So if they were talking about agriculture, they might talk about censors must control the sides of fields, but by the way, Carthage must be destroyed. In 149 to 146 BC, Carthage was busy at war with the Numidians, and in 146 BC, Cato the Elder urges the Republic to attack Carthage. Not to be confused by Cato the Younger, who existed a little bit further down the line, and he spoke out against Julius Caesar in 52 BC. Laughingly referred to as the Third Punic War in 149 BC was the Siege of Carthage when another of the Scipios, the son of a Scipio and father Scipio had been in a battle against Hannibal's brother who'd died. Scipio's son got wind of this and hated Hannibal so he learned all of his tactics and he attacked Hannibal at Zama, and this Scipio then got known as Scipio Africanus, and became a well-known general. That ends the Third Punic War with a mass raid on Carthage, and when Carthage was massacred and levelled to the ground and set on fire, and everybody was captured as slaves and sold into slavery. That was basically the end of the Carthaginian and the Phoenician Empire, and the whole thing was retired into history as the Romans carried on taking over parts of the rest of Europe and almost the entire known world.